So in this chapter, we will see what happens if our, if our estimate of uh, uh, motor parameters are not uh, absolutely correct. And uh, so that was a question I had uh, when I started to learn about this material. And uh, that's what I like to clarify <coughs> in this chapter. So, you know, borrowing this slide from chapter five, uh, in, in that we saw how we estimate, uh, for example, the, the position of the rotor flux linkage uh, with which we would like to align D axis in order to do vector control. And as you can see here, this uh, uh, calculation of uh, uh, where that D axis is depends upon motor parameters as they are shown over here. And uh, particularly, you know, this tau sub r, it depends upon the rotor resistance. And this rotor resistance is not always accurate to measure, but also it can change quite a bit as rotor heats up. So unless there's some estimation of uh, how that rotor resistance is changing, uh, we could be off uh, quite a bit. So you can see all these things are dependent upon uh, road, machine parameters here. So that's what we want to look at here. <clears throat> so uh, let's again uh, look at our uh, machine in D and Q axis and uh, some, you know, our outer, uh, the controllers for uh, torque and speed and position, they're telling us what reference currents we should apply to D and Q axis, okay? So but uh, we are applying those uh, uh, reference currents to wrong set of axes. That's what, what I would like to point out. Yeah, so let's say that our estimated D axis is over here, and this EST is estimate, okay? And the actual D axis in the motor where the rotor flux really is, is over in this position over here. And at a given time T, whatever that is, the Rotor, uh, the stereo current space vector is over here, okay? So that space vector is there, but uh, depending upon which uh, reference uh, axes we are uh, you know, looking at, uh, you know, ISD and ISQ could be very different. So we are applying uh, the reference currents to the wrong uh, set of axes. We agreed on that. And so you can see that uh, on uh, as a reference, I mean, uh, if you take the projection of this actual current space vector at time t, uh, you know, we'll get the right values of these currents uh, on these axes. But uh, as far as the actual motor is concerned, where the d axis really should have been, the currents are these here, ISD and ISQ. Okay. So what is the effect of that? And this is being done where when k tau is taken to be greater than 1 as defined over here. <clears throat> All right, so we need to, uh, you know, relate uh, the actual uh, the currents to estimated currents uh, and vice versa, perhaps. So what we see here is that, uh, again, definitions I, uh, you know, carried forward from the previous slide, and we see that uh, uh, this ISD estimate is given by these two based on where the estimated D axis is and ISD DQ uh, based on this currents which are actually the, the motor sees, uh, you know, in D and Q axis, in real D and Q axis is here. But, uh, <clears throat> but the, the, you know, we, we only have one ISD DQ here, right? So they both should end up to the same. And in order for them to end up, uh, we see that uh, they can be related by this equation here, where theta r, theta error, I should say, is the difference of these two two angles over here. So, so we can convince ourselves that uh, these two, based on uh, the estimated d axis and actual d axis, are pointing to the same ISDQ here. So this this is a relationship, and if that is the case, uh, we can compute ISD and ISQ in terms of the reference currents here and uh, theta error right here. Okay, so so with this we can uh, uh, you know we we will be very much helped in our understanding uh, if we assume that the rotor is blocked, it's not moving, and uh, so uh, and these two currents are given 
and uh, so we estimate uh, theta dA here using this uh, estimated motor model, but with the wrong parameters, okay, and we come up with these currents here and uh, reference currents, and then uh, again this uh, ideal current regulated PWM inverter will give us these currents here, so uh, which are going to the motor. So, so th these currents, uh, when we uh, convert them to D and Q axis, but using uh, you know our wrong estimates here and wrong theta dA estimate, we get uh, these two here, and uh, they are equal to the reference currents which we are uh, applying here, and then we get uh, this uh, flux linkage and uh, theta dA estimate over here. But we are applying the same currents to the actual motor. Okay, so and. Uh, I remember that this order is blocked here. So when we transform these ABC currents to DQ, uh, we are using this uh, theta dA, uh, which is the actual angle between uh, the rotor A axis and the D axis where it is actually. And uh, so you can see that uh, again, it's the same block diagram that we have here uh, that we use here. Okay. The important thing to note here, and that will come up uh, later on, uh, well, maybe we should leave it for the next, uh, uh, where it comes in here. So, so now our intent in this example is to see uh, what is the difference between the, the actual currents versus the commanded currents and what's the, the difference uh, ratio of the actual torque versus the commanded torque, okay? And also we like to see what this theta error is. So here's an example where uh, you know, it's under a block rotor condition. The flux is initially built up to rated values, and the torque is commanded to change as a step from zero to nearly 50% of the rated value. And then we are going to plot this, this, and the slip speed dA here, and theta error as a function of time. Okay, and the only thing here is that all the motor parameter parameters are estimated exactly you know, as they are, except for rotor resistance, R sub R, which is uh, uh, one half of actual R sub R. So this estimated value is one half of the, the actual rotor resistance. Okay, so uh, we, we do this in Simulink, and, you know, we put the estimated motor model here uh, using uh, the wrong rotor resistance, and then we have the actual motor model over here where we have the actual resistance because motor is what it is. So we have to use the actual resistance, rotor resistance for it, right? So using all that, uh, we can uh, you know, run the simulation and do the plotting over here. So the plotting part is all done over here. <clears throat> all right, so what are the results? Uh, what we see is that uh, ISD uh, you know, as a ratio of the commanded value, uh, you know, it's uh, uh, it should be one ideally, but it ends up to be quite different. Actually, this machine would saturate, uh, but that we have not taken into account. And uh, similarly, ISQ, uh, which should be as a ratio, should be one, but it's you know somewhere like 0 0.7 something or 0 0.6 something. All right, uh, and uh, electromagnetic torque also goes through a gyration. And uh, it's not giving us one, but in steady state, it is a different value. And we can calculate those, uh, those these steady state values, but it shows the dynamic uh, performance here. And this theta error is quite large, it's in electrical radiance, so it's a pretty large value here. Okay, <clears throat> so our next attempt would be to say, uh, to calculate what the steady state errors here, here are. So one thing we will note is that from previous discussion that uh, you know we only have this actual uh, stator current space vector at any given time. And regardless of what uh, reference axes you're using, actual or estimated, uh, uh, it's the same. So the, the amplitude uh, should be the same, which is shown over here, okay? And, uh, and then the omega dA, we know is given by this expression. Uh, and if you use the actual values, we'll get that. And uh, well, that's the expression, but what we'll do is we'll get rid of this lambda RD 
assuming that in steady state, and that's the calculations we are doing, that lambda rd is equal to L sub m i s d here. Okay, so if you use that, uh, omega dA can be written in this form here, and uh, the, using the estimated values, it's uh, this over here. Okay, so here you can see we are applying the, the, the input, which is, uh, you know, coming out of torque and speed and position loops. So, so this is where, our, you know, we need to argue that, uh, you know, in a steady state, these two quantities are the same. And if that's the same, then we already have the expression here for the estimated uh, omega dA and the actual omega dA over here. So why are they equal? Well, uh, the, re and the argument uh, we have to make is that, look, uh, in this diagram here, uh, we have uh, in steady state all these currents at uh, some frequency. And you know, the omega dA is really the slip frequency so because the rotor is blocked here. So they are at slip frequency. <clears throat> and, uh, and if that's the case in steady state, uh, that can, you know, uh, the frequency uh, that is, uh, uh, that results in uh, ISD and ISQ here being constant and ISD estimate here and ISQ estimate here uh, being constant, meaning DC, can only happen uh, that if uh, <clears throat> this omega dA here is equal to uh, omega dA, uh, which is uh, over here, right here, okay? because it's going through an integrator here, and uh, you know th this uh, theta dA estimate should change uh, such that you have uh, given the same frequency over here, and uh, it should also change with time at this, such that you have the same frequency over here, which implies that this one here, if it changes such that uh, you get the same frequency, that means these two are equal. So that's the argument. Okay, so with that argument, uh, you know, we can equate uh, these two uh, slip speeds. And uh, so so this is just all mathematical manipulation, very easy, because uh, the physics is what we need to, uh, to discuss. So if you define this parameter m as the ratio of these commanded values, and uh, so we can go through it all, and we can see that uh, the ratio of ISD ratio of ISQ, theta error, and uh, this electromagnetic torque, they can all be calculated based on, uh, you know, this uh, parameter M that we have defined. So, so if we look at uh, <clears throat> this example one, uh, which we talked about, example one, six dash one, and uh, so what are, what are the steady state uh, values, okay? For, for these quantities over here, okay? So we ran a dynamic simulation and you saw that they were all reaching some steady state and, uh, but uh, those steady state values should be uh, calculable from uh, the equations that we derived in the previous slide and they, they match that this is over here, this is over here, and this is over here. So the bottom line is that uh, even if we have uh, some error in uh, estimating the machine parameters, uh, you know, it, it still uh, operates, but uh, not uh, in an optimum fashion. And uh, uh, these errors would need to be taken care of by, uh, you know, outer loops like torque loop, speed loop, position loop, and also for the flux linkage, okay. So, so this is uh, all uh, there is in this chapter. So thank you very much. So discard, right?